let's use simulation nodes to eat a cookie. We'll start off by actually modeling the cookie. So let's delete the default cube and press shift A and search for a UV sphere. To bring it into a cookie like shape, we can press tab to go into edit mode, or you can use this drop down over here and then just select this bottom most vertex. After that, go ahead and press O to switch on proportional editing or press this button up here and then just press GZ and bring it up. To influence more of the object, just use your scroll wheel and that way you can shift everything up just like that and basically flatten it down towards the base. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and press tab to go back into object mode and scale it down on the Z axis to flatten out even further. Once you're happy with the shape, you can press control three to add in the subdivision surface of level three or even a subdivision surface of level two will work. So then you can go ahead and apply this modifier if you want to, but you don't need to. To add in some amount of variation to the surface or surface imperfections, you can go ahead and add in a new geometry node modifier. So let's bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this to the geometry node editor. Then press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree and then press shift A and search for a set position node. Now we need to move these randomly using a noise texture. So let's press shift and search for a noise texture, but plugging the noise texture in directly will cause a lot of issues. The first being that it shifted up towards the top right. So to fix that, we search for a vector math node and just subtract 0.5 on all of the axes. So let's change this from add to subtract and change all of the values to 0.5. Beyond that, it's way too strong. So let's reduce the scale to something like 0.1 and that might be too less. So let's just make it one. And now to reduce the strength, search for another vector math node or select this subtract node and press shift D, plug it in here and change it from subtract to scale. And now just reduce the scale value to maybe 0.3 and that should be good enough. So this is our base cookie shape. You can apply all of the modifiers, you can apply the scale, but again, none of them is necessary to be applied at the moment. The next thing that we have to do is actually start eating away this particular cube. To create that animation, we have to create a new geometry node object. So let's just press shift A and search for a cube and name this geo node object. And we can label this sphere as well to cookie. And then with the geo node object selected, press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. Now we don't need the group input, so let's select it and delete it. Next, we can press this pin button so that it doesn't move around to other geometry node trees when we select something else. And then let's just take this cookie from here and drag it into the geometry node tree. Now, if we directly take the original and plug the geometry into the group output, you see our cookie is bloated up again. So we have to make sure that we changed it to relative and the scale and everything will be applied. Now that we have the cookie in our geometry node object, we can go ahead and hide the original cookie because we don't need it. Then let's go ahead and press shift A and search for an icosphere because this icosphere is going to be what allows us to cut out the bytes from the cookie. But if we directly plug this icosphere into the group output, we see that this icosphere has not enough subdivisions to actually look like a byte. So to make it nice and smooth, we can change the radius down to maybe 0.6 and increase the number of subdivisions to something like three. Then to prevent it from being perfectly round, we press shift A and search for a set position node and just offset it with some noise textures. But just like the previous noise texture, this is going to be shifted on the positive X, Y, and Z axis, making it shift towards the top right. So we press shift A, search for vector math nodes and just do the same order of operations. Subtract a value of 0.5 on all of the axes and then duplicate this, change it to scale, scale it down by maybe 0.3 and just increase the scale on the noise texture or reduce it. It's completely up to you as to what you prefer the size of the byte to be. But once you're done with this, I think now we can go ahead and subdivide it just once again to make it smoother. So press shift A, search for a subdivision surface node, plug that in here, and maybe you can just subdivide it twice. So that looks good enough like the object that's going to be creating the bytes or taking the bytes out of my cookie, but we need to be able to move this object around. So to be able to move this object around, we can use an external object that we can move around and just place this object into the same location as that object. So let's press shift A and search for an empty plane axis and then press shift A here and search for an object info node or just take this empty from here and drag it and drop it here. Then press shift A and search for a transform geometry, plug that in after the subdivision surface modifier and just take the location of this empty and plug it into the translation. And we can also plug the rotation and scale as well, although I won't be using those too much for this tutorial. Beyond that, it's best that we change from original to relative so that changes will be updated as well. Next, we need to bring the cookie back. So let's take the geometry from the cookie and just plug this into the group output. Now we need to tell this cookie to be deleted wherever this particular 
icosphere that we created is present. So for that, we press shift A and search for a mesh boolean and we plug that in right in between the group output and the object info node. And right now it's a good time to save your Blender file. So press control S and save it. Then take the output from the transform geometry and plug that into mesh two. Now you see you have a hole, but the problem with this particular setup right now is that even if we take this empty and move it around, yes, we do get cuts happening in different areas and it looks like bites. But as we move the empty away, the bite also seems to magically disappear and we get our cookie back again. We don't want that. Once a bite is taken out of the cookie, you should not be able to bring the cookie back magically. So that's why we use simulation nodes. Let's press shift A and search for a simulation zone. And now we can take the input geometry and plug that into the simulation input and then take the output and plug that into the group output. Inside the simulation zone, we can take this particular mesh boolean and take this geometry and plug that into mesh one. That way, instead of plugging this directly into mesh one, we're plugging it through the simulation input. And now we can take the output from this mesh boolean and plug that into the simulation output. This this way, whenever we play the animation, once the mesh boolean has been operated and the object has disappeared, it'll remain disappeared because that is the input geometry to the mesh boolean in the next frame. So what we do is we can now set all of our animation defaults and then record the animation. So let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, change the end frame to 300 so that it's a 10 second long animation. Output folder can be whatever you want it to be. File format, we're going to choose FFmpeg video and the encoding, we're going to change the container from Matroska to MPEG4 and output quality. I'm going to choose perceptually lossless. Then let's press this button to record all of the actions that we do. It's called auto keying and we'll add keyframes to essentially this particular empty object as the animation plays. Now remember, because we're doing this entire mesh boolean as well, you won't be able to play it back in real time. So what you can do is that you can actually reduce the number of subdivisions on both the icosphere as well as the subdivision surface node, just so that it works a bit faster. Similarly, for the cookie itself, you can go to the modifiers and reduce the number of subdivisions over here as well. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm also recording the screen, which is already taking up a lot of my computational power and I have a really low end laptop. If your PC can handle it, you don't necessarily have to reduce all of these down. But in case you have a low end PC, this will definitely work. Then you can just select the empty. So now you can press the spacebar to play the animation or just play the animation using your own shortcut and then press G to grab this particular object and move it around as the actual animation plays. So let's press the spacebar and then move this and just cut in as the first byte and then create the second byte over here. Maybe create the third byte here. Make sure that you remove all those extra crumbs, make another cut here and then a cut here, a cut there, and then just finish it off. Now, when you play back the animation, even if you did see some random things occurring, they won't occur when you actually replay the simulation. And this is exactly what we have. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and just start increasing the number of subdivisions again and then play the animation and just take a look at what it currently looks like. And of course, you can keep changing the animation according to your liking till you get something that you like. Because even in this animation, I made it such that there's this little area that hasn't been eaten off. And obviously in a realistic situation, that would not be feasible. This area would have broken away. Even though I changed that later, it just doesn't make sense. So make sure that you re-record this as many times as necessary until you're happy with the way that it looks and make sure that you change this playback from play every frame to frame dropping so that you get a realistic idea of how fast you're biting into the cookie and things like that. So once you're happy with the cookie animation, you can start off the texturing for the cookie and everything. So let's select the original cookie object and remove this pin so that we can go to the geometry node tree of the cookie object. Now, if you don't see the geometry node tree appear, make sure that in the modifiers, you select the geometry node modifier and that way it should appear. Just move the group output to the side, press shift A, search for a set shade smooth node, plug that in here and then press shift A and search for a set material. Plug that in right here and choose the default material. Go to the material properties, select the default material and change the name to maybe cookie. Then change the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Change your viewport display to rendered. Go to your render properties, switch on screen space reflections, bloom and ambient occlusion if required and then begin your actual texturing. So for the cookie, I'm going to, of course, increase the roughness all the way to one and then play around with the base color. So I'll press shift A and search for a color ramp node so that I have more than one colors. And one's going to be for the chocolate chip cookies and one's going to be for the rest of the cookie. To create chocolate chip cookies, I'm going to start with a base of a Voronoi texture because the distance value of the Voronoi texture plugged into the color ramp will give me these nice circles. And in case you're not seeing any changes whatsoever, make sure that you have this same set material done in your actual geometry node object node tree. Let's just select that, come here and press shift A, set material, plug that in after the simulation output and choose cookie. Then go back to the shader editor, choose the cookie material. And now let's plug this into the base color. And now you can see the circles. However, chocolate chip 
cookies aren't going to have perfect circles and to actually get the circles from the distance you have to bring in these sliders closer to each other to increase the contrast so to add in some noise to these circles we can play around with the actual vector input of the Voronoi texture so let's press ctrl t with the node wrangler enabled to get the texture coordinate and mapping nodes let's switch from generated to object and then just play around with the scale till you feel like it's an appropriate size so let's go with maybe a scale of three and now we need to add in some noise to this so press shift a search for a mix color node plug that in right here and then press shift a and search for a noise texture now we can take the color from the noise texture and plug it into socket b and essentially if we go towards a factor of zero we get only the Voronoi texture as we increase the factor to one we get only noise so we just want to add in a little bit of noise so let's just increase the factor to something like maybe 0.12 and i think that just makes these less circular and more chocolate chip shaped I'm also going to increase the scale to four and that looks like a nice number of chocolate chips present along the cookie but we need to give this the chocolate chip colors so let's press shift a search for color ramp node plug that in right here and this time change the colors to the colors of your cookie and chocolate chip so the white color has to become the cookie brown so let's just bring it in here and maybe reduce the color a little bit more and the black has to be a very dark brown so let's just increase it by a little bit and make it towards a brownish color so that seems like yes we have our chocolate chips present in the cookie but to actually make this look a lot more realistic we can add in some bump so to add in the bump we can press shift a and search for a bump node but for the input of the bump we want both the chocolate chip cookies as well as some noise so press shift a search for a noise texture and then plug this color into the height but we need to mix in the output from the Voronoi texture as well so press shift a search for a mix color node change this from mix to add so that we're adding in the noise to the chocolate chips so let's plug the noise into the second socket increase the factor all the way to one and take the output from the color ramp and plug it into the socket a then let's just plug the normal into the normal to see what we have and then play around with the noise settings so right now this is what we have let's increase the scale to something like 10 to make it a lot sharper but the issue that we're having is that the chocolate chips seem to be going into the cookie instead of coming out of the cookie so to fix that we can just search for an invert node and invert the color ramp that's coming out from the Voronoi texture that's creating the chocolate chips so press shift a search for an invert node so we take invert color and plug that in right here so now the chocolate chips appear to be protruding out which is exactly what we want but i don't want this noise texture to be this prominent so i'll press shift a search for a hue saturation value node plug that in right here and just reduce the value from 1 to maybe 0.2 so now with the value of 0.2 that looks better but i think my chocolate chip cookies are a bit too sharp so back on this color ramp i can just bring this black in by a bit and that way i get better pointiness for the chocolate chips but not better color for my color ramp here so i'm going to bring this in itself and press shift d on the color ramp so that i get another version of it and then i'll plug this distance into the input over here bring this out to the side bring this in here plug this into the color and then just slowly drag this in until we have the correct type of bump for our chocolate chips so i think this sort of a color ramp for the chips is perfectly all right so now we have the cookie we have the chocolate chips on the cookie and we have the animation of this entire thing getting eaten up so that is exactly what we required and once you're happy with the way everything's turned out you can add in whatever background you want so let's just press shift a add in a plane gz to just bring it down below the cookie give it a new material maybe make it completely rough as well give it an opposite color to the brownish color so maybe a bluish color like this we can take the light as well increase the radius a bit so that we get softer shadows maybe make it one meter then place the camera by selecting the camera here pressing alt g to clear location alt r to clear rotation and then gz to just bring it up then press zero on your numpad to go into your camera view again gz a little bit more and then press render animation i think this was a fun one and you could level this up by adding in some particles as the munching occurs and things like that i might create a new tutorial of that sort and a few more using this specific technique so if you're interested definitely stay tuned because they'll be coming out really soon if you do something creative with this particular technique definitely share it with me on instagram at the iron studios or you can leave links in the comments as well and i'll take a look at as many as i can for as long as i can if you have questions comments or queries let me know below and i will respond to them as well until my next video comes out tomorrow thank you so much for watching keep creating and stay creative